Blessings and favor to you, my friends. What a blessing and privilege it is uh, to be able to come into so many living rooms, hospital rooms, bedrooms, uh, wherever you are, even to those who are behind prison bars. I got good news for you. You may be locked in, but the Holy Ghost is not locked out. God can reach you right where you are. Thank you for tuning in. You have tuned in on the right day for the right word. God has a word that is divinely orchestrated and designed to bring change to your life. I want you to sit back, fasten your seatbelts. We're going into the sanctuary of New Home Ministries, and uh, God's getting ready to bless you. Let's go in. God bless. I'm we'll talking about the journey. We tend to know an awful lot about God blessing the Jews with the journey from slavery to freedom and less about our own. Every January 31st, December 31st, there should be a mass meeting of blacks to poor in New Orleans because literally thousands of us were dropped here into slavery. New Orleans. Some people said in a very trite way, they say, well, you know, we came in different boats, we're in the same boat now. That sounds kind of cute, but that's not reality. So we came on very different boats, very different circumstances. The so immigrants came looking for a better place. America was their blessing. Refugees came in desperation. Food of the war, and America blessed them. Mothers came as contract. They worked for somebody, they brought them in, they worked X number of years, and they get free. So we came as an enslaved people. No one ship was like our ship. Our ship was full of people being sold into slavery, not delivered into freedom. They had their Red Sea. We had our Atlantic Ocean. They had their port of Egypt, we had our port of New Orleans. The largest port in the world today is from Baton Rouge down to New Orleans, open port. They had their Jordan River, we had our Mississippi River, and our Savannah River. Say, so God is older than Genesis and did not stop at Revelation. God is with us even now. The chief blessing for the biblical people was freedom. So not food, freedom. Not status, freedom. When God frees the people, that's the chief blessing. Bible says, and God said, we thank God for putting his mighty hand and delivering us from sleep. When I was a little boy, the big hero was Jack Robinson. Before that was the NBA, before that was the NFL, it was baseball. Jack Robinson came into white baseball. I say white baseball because it was, so that were three leagues, four leagues, so that were four leagues. African-American leagues, called Negro leagues, white leagues, called major leagues, Latin American leagues, and Japanese leagues. They were white, black, Latino, and Japanese. So when we joined, so when we joined the white league, we didn't know how good baseball could be until everybody could play. We didn't come to the Dodgers to learn how to play baseball. We, we, we came starting.
You had Jack Robinson, Don Newcomb, and Campanella, three black players. We figured we could win it, and, but we would lose to the Yankees every year. It's six games, one, or four games, or three or something. 1955, we thought we could beat the Yankees because we had Sandy Koufax and Drysdale. In the four-game series, Yankees couldn't beat two of them. But on the day of the big game, this is the Super Bowl game, Koufax wouldn't pitch. So what's wrong with you? So that's, that's your uncle per day. I can't play baseball on that day. That's the day the Lord delivered us. So no ball game, no thing, no money, no private joy is greater than I promise to God and I thanks to God for delivering us from slavery. Our deliverance tends to mean, see, our deliverance tends to mean ham, marks, and greens on January 1st and a ball game. But God delivered, said that God delivering us from slavery is a big, that's the Super Bowl of freedom. How many of you knew your grandparents? Raise your hand. Knew your grandparents? Raise your hand. Your great grandparents raise your hand. Great great. Great great great. You kind of laugh because you don't. They are blur. In the first book of Matthew, David to Jesus fought say forty two generations. Jesus knew forty two generations. We stop at five. So Jesus quotes David, he's for the second degree, his lineage. Moses, 2,000 years older than David. So Jesus talked to Moses like he's his granddaddy, and Moses and Joseph was his dad. Now I want you to follow me now. First slave is a kind of blur. See, if I do not know, what the Lord delivered me from, I don't know how to thank him. Say, thanking God for a new car, a new suit, and a trip ain't quite like thanking God for freedom from slavery. Sixteen nineteen, we were brought here in shackles. Not for freedom, but for shackles. He was out on identity. And the worst thing they did was they erased our memory. They erased our memory. When I was a little younger, Grandma would be in there humming. I didn't know why she was humming. She, she was not a songstress. She'd just be humming. She said, sounds a language deaf I can't understand. She'd just be, mm -hmm. No organ, no piano, no riffs. Just be humming. I know she could think. Though she'd act like she was a scholar. She, she could count like she'd be making bridge. Count X amount of grains of salt. X amount of grains of sugar. Of salt. Like she was counting grains. She had to be a mathematician because it always come out just fine. <laughs> and that's why she would shout without, see, grandma could shout without organ. See, if I think, if I think about the goodness of God, I can thank God for his goodness. But if I can't think, I can't think. If I can't think, I can't shout. Many of us got PhDs in irrelevances and trivialities. She could think about 
how she had come out of slavery. See, so if you can think, see, so if you can think about God, really think, you can really think. Let me put this another way. Someone turn the fan on, please. Turn it out, please. Now, this is not a shouting sermon, Melvin, because it seems to me that I believe in good gravy. Say, shouting is not gravy. Shouting is overflow. Shouting is not good gravy. But unless good gravy has a meat base, it's just greasy water. Say gravy, gravy must have a meat base or it's just greasy water. So, so I'm trying to let a little meat base in. When the Constitution was written in 1776, we had been here 157 years already. So we were here before the Constitution. Declaration of Independence was written in 1789, so we'd been here 12 years before then. So we were here, we're not at the bottom of the nation, we're at the foundation. Now y'all that's a different. Say so the bottom is where you end up. Foundation is where you start from. In other words, if you had a little condominium and you don't know, 35th floor, and a stiff wind blew the roof off, you would be upset because the roof fell off. But folk on the other floors, they wouldn't be upset. But if there was a Katrina at the bottom, everything would be shook up. See, when the foundation shakes, everything shakes. We're not the bottom. We are the foundation. That's why we're the issue. The biggest discussion in 1789 was what she would do with them. What she would do with them who have driven our in this cotton to the top of the world. What she would do with them? So Africa provided three things. Take notes. So Africa provided three things. The shipping industry for 250 years. It provided resources from Africa and cheap labor from Africans. So our four parents are not slaves, they're our ancestors. They're slaves to conqueror. But my great 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 grandmama is not slave, but she's my great great grandma. Say my great 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 grandmama. It's my great great grandmama. She's not my slave. So I should never again refer to her as slave. You better me a minute. The king was cotton. The South wanted to break off and form a whole new nation of cotton and us as labor and shipping clerks. So the shipping clerks founded Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and Columbia in Georgetown. That's what's coming out now and breaking out in news today, breaking news. And then, they went a step further. So when we establish our, our, our preeminence as cultivating cotton, we became valuable. We're more valuable to our oppressors than to ourselves. So if today, if today, we've gone from picking cotton balls to picking footballs and basketballs, and don't own our services, we just shipped and pick it. <laughs> 32 NFL football teams, right? We own none. Thirty-two basketball teams, 
We all know. Best for our teams, we all won. So picking cotton was not so bad. If we could own the seeds, get the government subsidy, and turn cotton into textile, textile into clothes, and ship them. We could only pick it. We couldn't develop. So picking footballs and basketball ain't bad. If we can't own it, nothing's changed but the product. <clears throat> Slavery. Illegal to learn to read or write. Slave master got caught raping one of our women. She was his comfort zone. She was his experiment. The husband, or the, the man, she cause couldn't have a husband, said marriages and family was illegal. So if he had sex with his daughter, or with his wife, you could do nothing about it. There was not one rape technically in slavery. To beat a man, it was his property. So if they beat the man, they could not protest his property. So you end up with one family with four children, two of them very dark and two of them very light skinned. Look, look around our complexions in this room. We do not look like Nigerians, like we're from Benin. We look like we're landing in New Orleans. <laughs> so our hair is different. Our skin color is different. So we are a people not based on color, but culture and relationships. So you say, it's all right, so a dark skin, Negro, married, light skin, lady, and vice versa, because we say we are a people, not based upon complexion, based upon culture. Jack and I have five children, all seven of us are different colors. And, and, and no one, it, it doesn't affect anybody. So nobody in the house is affected. Seven people in the same house, all different complexions. That's the lineage of slavery. You black men to have sex with black women. To make other little slaves. If they were sick, throw them away. If they were strong, put them to work, or sell them. You make a boy and they sell your son, you can do nothing about it. You had no, no right in court. So strong boys, pick cotton, or sold to the neighbor, to the neighbor plantation. Remember Strom Thurmond some years ago, Miss Washington went to South Carolina State? She was Strom Thurmond's daughter. They finally put a name on, on the statue in South Carolina a few years ago. Say, so, so, so young black girls were comfort zones and experiment with slave masters. So, me too should have started a long time ago. See, so in slavery, we could not get a wage. Illegal to get money for work. Had no health care. We got sick. We died. My grandmother, Brother Sam, grandma, didn't have, a, didn't have a birth certificate because she was the last of 13 children. She was sickly. They thought she wouldn't live, but she didn't deserve to live. So she, 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 she hopped along that she had my mom at 13. I'm discussing the race, say slavery erased I remember. Now, just that's too far back. See, every, every cell of one of our ancestors is downtown in the records in New Orleans. So I'm because on every ship, the, the government taxed the ship and the cargo. If a ship that landed, the product got taxed. You got taxed according to how many products were on your plantation. So if they knew how many of us left West Africa, how many got thrown in the ocean, how many landed in New Orleans, how many went to the sugar plantation, 
And we went to the cotton plantation. Talk to me, somebody. I want y'all to hit me. I, I know this ain't shot material. I just want y'all to bear with me for a minute. I'll, 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 I'll let y'all let y'all go and watch the Pelicans or something after a while. But I got I got y'all trapped right now for a minute. So the records is not, we say, we don't know our past, but those who conquered us, those who got free land from the government and tax subsidy from the government and paid taxes to the government, they know. That's, that's, a, that's a scripture that's kind of sad, 137th Psalm, saying we went by the rivers of, say we went by the rivers of Babylon. And that we wept when we remembered Zion. So we were worse off. We don't remember Zion. We, we, we don't remember five generations deep. So that, there's, there's, no, there's no there there. There's just a, there's, there's just a blur. There's just a, a dark spot back there. So some people call say our great, great, great grandparents are not our slaves. Without them, it would not be us. They are our ancestors. Our parents, not our slaves. That leads into say everything fundamental to America is based upon slave trade. This is black history, we're gonna sell it the same today. The South gonna break away. Lincoln said, "I tell you what, if, if, if you don't come back in a hundred days, I'll I'll, I'll I'll take away your I'll take away your slaves. I'll take away your economy." See, our people were the, the backbone of the Confederate Army because we were cooking while they were working, and we were crops while they were fighting. So Lincoln said, "I'll free them." It was the biggest single blow to the slave system. Let me say, in a hundred days, if you don't, if you don't bring them back, I will uh, free them. He said, Master, the hell if that's true. So first we'll, we'll kill him, but he said, slaves are not going in. So we've had slavery 243 years. It ain't going in on no one morning. This, is, this was a fight going on. Our people have been waiting to hear a president with a full military authority give the order to free us. After all, we were enslaved by the government. So the government protected slave owners. We all better lose many. Christmas meant nothing to our people because A, you couldn't shop, had no money. No layaway, no credit card. So you couldn't leave the plantation. So, so the big deal for us was December 31st. Lincoln said, tomorrow, if they have not reconciled, I will free you. The first watch night service was December 31st, 1862. So we watched. What, what good guys come to church and pray the next year and bad guys have a private party? Say we watch. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, I know that that word uh, has affected change in the lives of so many people watching today. That's our aim, that's our desire. Not to impress you, but to improve you by the imparting of God's word. Listen, uh, if you're watching today and you're in need of prayer, I want you to sit down and call the number at the bottom of your screen. There are counselors who are sitting, waiting to pray for you, and waiting to pray with you, and usher you into the things of God. Uh, there may be someone today who is unsaved. Maybe you're in need of salvation. I want to pray with you today. I want to pray that God will come into your heart and come into your life, and that from this moment on, your life will not be the same. Will you pray with me? Close your eyes. Repeat after me. Father God, come into my heart. Take over my life. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my members to you. I ask you now, God, to forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole and holy. And I thank you now that from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I am saved. 
I am saved. I am saved. My brother, my sister, if you prayed that prayer with me, let me tell you, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved. Now what you need is a good church to help affect change in your life. And let me tell you, one single service at New Home Ministries will change your life forever. I want to see you Sunday morning. I want to see you in Baton Rouge at 8 o'clock, 3000 Tecumseh Street. 1030, I want to see you in New Orleans at 1616 Robert C. Blake Sr. Drive. I promise you, if you come one time, you will come back again. I love you. Thank God for you. And until next time, if I don't see you here on the air, if Jesus comes back, I'll see you in the air. Bless your spirit. We believe that all children deserve a bright future and the opportunity to pursue higher education. That's what my husband believed. His beliefs and his legacy have become the mission for the Robert C. Blake Sr. Scholarship Foundation. The R.C. Blake Sr. Scholarship Fund was founded in honor of my father, Bishop Robert C. Blake Sr., to provide opportunities for young people who have the desire to excel and the potential to succeed. As a family, we are encouraging every high school senior that's intending on going to college to visit rcblakesscholar.com to apply and to get more information. My husband loved and believed in you, and so do we. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. Life Television Network, in partnership with WERM 1220 AM. Listen to WERM 1220 AM for the best in Christian music, ministries, and more. Give your child the education they need at Word of Life Life Institute Christian School. We have a full-scale educational program serving grades K-1 through K-12. We utilize an acceleration Christian education curriculum that allows your child to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Openings are available, so call now at 251-456-2652. Life Institute Christian School, because our children are our future. Join us for an intercessory prayer call Tuesday and Thursday mornings from 7 o'clock a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Please call in by dialing 605-475-5950 in our access code 530-2859. Join us Tuesdays and Thursday mornings from 7 o'clock a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And you know what? I'm excited about today's lesson. I'm talking about blooming where you are planted. Today, we're going to deal with eldership and understanding eldership and what does that mean in the church. A lot of times, our terms of elderships and deacons and things like that get lost in the 21st century church. And sometimes we don't know if elders do exist, do deacons, do we still have deacons, do pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets. So what I'm going to talk about today is eldership in your church. If you have a great church and a great church is teaching you the word of God, they have elders and the elders are assisting them in shepherding you and leading you in the direction you need to go. Now, we're going to get right into it. Now, here's one of the definitions for eldership. Eldership is an elder, a pastor, a bishop, an overseer, a minister. An elder is someone that is separated to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
What I mean by that separated to the to the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, they believe in this Bible. They believe the Bible is the word of God. They truly are separated for the use of God. They're submitted to God. They are in tune with the Lord. In this teaching, you're going to hear me make statements like that. A true elder believes in the Bible. He believes in the truth of the Bible. Second statement you want to hear me say is that elders should know the Bible. And so uh, these two things you're going to hear in this particular lesson as well. You're also going to hear about what does elders do when sick come to them? What does an elder supposed to do when someone's sick in the church? We're going to find out those things as well as appointing elders. Well, all of these things we're going to talk about. So I'm going to ask you to get your Bible, get your pad, or get something to write with. You're going to need to follow along with us today because you're going to be really blessed. So let's go into the message already in progress. And I'll be right back in just a moment. As we take a look at the New Testament church today, I would like to begin to focus on and share the importance on eldership. I'm going to say it again. I like to share the importance of eldership. Now, before I get started, I want us to all be on the same page. So let's go on and deal with the definition. Now, first of all, now, how many in here know what elder means in church? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Ye yell it out. Just uh, if, you, if you got a hand, you said elder. Elder mean to you what? What does elder mean to you? Older person. Older person. Okay. What else? Okay, 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 all right, all right, okay, you was at the first, sir. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Seasoned a seasoned person. We say an older person, a seasoned person, and an overseer, and a leader, okay. Uh, what? Uh, more experience. Good, good, awesome. What else? A father, okay, glory to God. Two from this section. All right. Over here, no, okay, cool, all right, that's all good, it's all good, it's all good, invite on the, on the web, okay, cool, all right, all right, so, somebody well versed in the word, huh, wise, that's great, 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 now all of you guys have answered that, word, that, that correctly, that's what elder means, it does mean older, it does mean semi-wiser, it does mean uh, overseer, all those things are absolutely correct. And that's the reason why it's so important that when you're in a church that you understand when someone gets up and talks about an elder in the church, what does that mean? And what we need to do is find out what that means, okay? So let's go and all of us get on the same page. Look at it. Put up the definition for elder for me real quick. Okay. Now I want you to read this with me, everybody. Ready? Now read. What is an elder? A pastor, a bishop, young lady back in the back, overseer, I think she was at her service, and a minister, someone that is what? Separated to the gospel of Jesus and has the willingness to lead others in their relationship with the Lord. See, because an elder can't necessarily just be old, because if that's the case, Timothy was an elder. Not only Timothy was an elder, but we see James was an elder. And so we see all of these elders that were maybe not as old as some, but maybe younger than some. So it's not just old, but it does mean that, though. If you look in the Bible, it talks about that. It talks about old is being an elder. So but when we talk about eldership here in the church, it's important that we understand what does that mean. Now, why is it important to you? You say, well, pastor, I don't need to know this. Yes, you do. Let me tell you why. You know, if you worked on a job, and I give this example all the time. If I worked at a store, and, uh, and I'm putting up the groceries. I'm just stacking the groceries at the store, and then all of a sudden somebody come by and say, hey, there's a spill on aisle seven. And so I said, well, okay, okay, I'll, you know, I'll check on it just a minute. So I get up, and then I go back there, and I get the mop. And then I see this guy walking down the aisle that works at the store. And so I just gives him the mop. Hey, man, there's a spill on aisle seven. So I give that guy the mop. When he gets the mop in his hands, right, he then looks at me kind of strange because I'm going back to do what I was doing. I just see you walking. You can handle that. You see me stacking groceries. But because I did not know that that was the manager. Yeah, you can see where I'm going with this, right? Now, I work there, but I don't know that's the manager. I gave him the mop to do something that the custodian does. But why do we do that in church? We don't know who the leaders are. We don't really know who the elders are. But yet we assume. We got quiet. I lost people on that one. I thought I'd have a good shouting on that one. Or maybe it's because you, you, you may have missed it. But I want you to get this. If I go, if I'm going to grow in a church, I must know 
how it operates. Got it? How many believe a rose can grow in the desert? <laughs> yeah, I see that hand up. One hand went up. But they got a slick way. They, they gonna, they gonna, now, because why? Why does a rose not grow in the, uh, in, in the desert? Why? No hot, no water. It's not the right environment. See, if you put the plant or anything that grows in the right environment, what happens? It grows. The same thing with you. God desires you to grow in the things of God. Look at John chapter 16, uh, 15 and verse 16. Look at this and read this together with me. Are you there? Ready? Now, read. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear what? Fruit and that you, your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask, the Father in my name, he will what? Give it to you. Isn't that a great promise? Isn't that a great promise? But watch what Jesus says. Jesus says, because it's written in red. Jesus says, you did not what? Choose me, but I chose you. And I what? Appointed. Isn't it awesome? That God is the one that appoints you. God is the one that places you. God is the one that places you in your church. You choose the church, but it's God the one that's ordering your steps. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So now, you are planted in your church by God. Say that with me. I'm planted in the church by God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. When you get over there, say I'm there. Look at verse 18. Ready? Now read. But now, God has what? Set the members, each one of them. Who set them in there? God. God has set each one of them in the body just as he pleased. Not how you please, but it's how God pleases. Amen. Isn't, isn't it awesome that God is, is really setting you in the church? And when you're set in the church where God desires you to be, you can grow. Got it? Now, remember this now. It says, and if any were all one member, where would the body be? And simply talking about the head, the, the, the eyes, the nose. He's talking about bringing the whole body of Christ together. But he also then began to say that I plan them there. Now, let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. So what we see, number one, is that we see that it is God who plants you in the church. Number two is, is that we see also, too, that it's God the one that orchestrates, that God is the one that chose you and appointed you. Amen. Then number three we want to find out is that not only God does that, but God picks the pastor that he wants you to have. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Now look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and read. And he himself, who is he himself? God himself gives some to be what? Apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. Who gives them? God. Wow, this is a great crowd, man. Y'all are, are the advanced class. I love this. So, so, so now, so would you agree with me? It is God that chose you. It is God that plants you. Got it? And it is God who sets the pastor or leader over your life. Could y'all agree with that with all the scriptures I gave? Okay. All right. Let's go to one more scripture in verse, uh, uh, yeah, for verse 12. That's it. It says, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Now, all of that's real good. I'll stay there all day if I, if I don't move on. But go over to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. So God chooses you. God also, too, appoints you to be fruitful. God also too places you in the church, and then God also too chooses, chooses those gifts that God desires to be over your life. Amen? So in Acts chapter 16 and verse 4, ready? Now read. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decree to keep with, which were de uh, determined by the apostles and who? Elders at Jerusalem. Now watch this now. The, the, the apostles and the elders was given instructions and decree to the church. Watch this now, because this is important, that when you have elders and you have God-fearing elders, God-elders leadership, you have elder leadership, your church will be strengthened and it will grow. Let me, can I prove that? Watch this. It, here it is right here. Verse 5. Are you there? Ready? Now read. So the church was what? Strengthened in faith. And increased in number. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, okay, so we cleared that up. That God is the one that appoints. 
uh, you to be in your church. He's the one that increases you. He's the one that causes things to happen. But he uses um, elders in the midst of that. God calls elders. God calls ministers and those things. But man got to be appointed by God. I mean, by, by, by leadership, got to be appointed by leadership. Well, I know you're enjoying the broadcast. You know what? I'm enjoying bringing the broadcast to you. We can't share everything in a short time that we have together, but you can get the entire CD by simply calling the number on the screen. Yep. Dial the number on the screen. There are operators waiting on your phone call, and they'll take your information, and they will send you out this CD absolutely free. Now, if you want to get more of the entire series, all we ask you to do is sow a love gift of $20 or more, and they'll send you out the entire package, and it really be a blessing to you and your family as well. Now, if you know anyone that's going into ministry, this would be really good. If you haven't known someone that's in Bible school, this would be really, really good as well, getting it for them and uh, encouraging them as they go into ministry. Now, let's go back into the message already in progress, and I'll be right back to pray for you in just a moment. Now, watch this. Now, go over to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Now, the thing about elders is that you need to understand is that elders cannot be not connected to a church. I'll say it again, kind of messed it up. In other words, an elder cannot be an elder unless they are connected to a local church. Because you was an elder in a church prior to you coming here does not give you jurisdiction in this area. Why? Because the people that ordained you saw your faithfulness and saw your life. So ordinations, un unlike we have done it very religiously, we have done it, we have like, well, I was an elder over here, so I expect to be a minister and elder over here. Well, that's not how it happens. You can only be connected to a local church. If you're not connected to a local church, and then your eldership is no longer, you're a minister, you're minister still, but you're not an elder. Can y'all follow that? In other words, you're a minister, and you still can minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you're no longer an elder because elders are appointed through and by the church. All right. Okay. Praise God. All right. All right. Let's, now, let's, 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 and, and, that's, and that's what it's all about. All right. Now, let's look at this now. Uh, go over to James chapter 14 and verse, uh, James chapter 5, verse 14. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let him do what? Call for the elders on Liberty Hall Road. Huh? No, uh, no, of Liberty Hall Road. No, of Sycamore Street. <laughs> no, of the what? Church. Notice that he did not say just call for any elder. He says let them be connected to a local church. Because why? Because elders need to be governed by the authority that, that God has set up over their life. Thank you for the overwhelming amen. It says, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him and anoint him with oil. And in the name of, in the name of, Je uh, in, in the, name of the Lord. Now, there are four things that our uh, elders are supposed to do for the sick. There are four things that the elders are supposed to do for the sick. Number one, he's supposed to pray over them. He's supposed to pray over them. Now, if you're an elder and you don't know how to pray, you shouldn't be praying over anybody. Got it. Until you develop uh, enough uh, a wisdom and insight on how to pray. Number two, anoint the sick with oil. If you don't know about the anointing, it is difficult for you to be an elder. Amen. Amen. You have to have a relationship with the anointing. Uh, number three, invoke the name of the Lord. Invoking the name of the Lord means calling upon the name of the Lord, knowing what the name of the Lord does. Amen. Number four. Pray the prayer of faith. If you're going to be an elder, you must operate with the ability of faith. If you don't have the ability of faith living on the inside of you, how could you believe for healing for someone else? Amen. Amen. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. You guys are a good crowd. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. Are you there, class? Now watch this now. In verse 5. Ready? Now read. The elder who are among you, I exhort... And, of course, I who am a fellow er, uh, elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also the partaker of the glory that was what? Revealed. Now we see that there, now the word elder again, you see it again. Elder is where? Among them. Notice now there's accountability. Elder is not walking around here by himself. He's still accountable to the church. 
He's accountable to those that are, that, are, that are there with him. Now, the reason why this is important to you as a believer, you said, Pastor, I don't need to know all this stuff. You remember I gave you the story about the giving the mop to the wrong person? Remember that story? I t- told you that story for a reason. The reason why I told you that story is, is that in church, when you don't know what the positions or the offices are, you can't get out of them what you desire to get. So, success is always geared on wisely behavior. It's not built, built on just knowledge. You got to know how to behave in the house of God. Amen. Got it? That, that causes you to really grow in the things of God. Now, you probably say, but why, why, did, why did we leave it? The reason why we left talking about eldership and things of that nature is because it's, it's like today. You see how quiet it is in here? Uh, most times, pastors do not want to talk about it because it, it, it is a message that's for leadership. You know, you have people fall asleep on you, but I have people fall asleep on good messages too. So, I mean, so it don't make no difference. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, you know me. Hey, sleep on, my brother. <laughs> Amen. Have a good sleep. Amen. But, but, uh, but we got we to gotta learn it, folks. We can't be ignorant of the fact that God wants your church to be healthy. God wants you to be able to know how it flows. Why? For you can get into the flow. See, if I know who my elders are, I can call upon them when I'm sick. I, I can reach out to them and begin to allow, allow them to pray and believe God in my life. Just pray in my life. They can begin to minister to me. And then I cannot just be looking at just one man. I'm not just looking at the pastor. Oh, the pastor. that's okay. I, I just wait for the pastor. You may be waiting a long time. You want to be able to sit down with these men and women of God that God called and chose and has a hand on them and and be blessed by them because they had an anointing on their life as well. Not just the pastor. Amen. 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 And in order to release them and be able to flow in them, you got to know who they are. Got to know who they are. Now, let's keep going. Now, go to Acts chapter 14, verse 23. The appointments of elders consist of two types of elders in the New Testament. In other words, when you start studying this, you'll see that there's two types of elders in the New Testament. There is what's called an elder that is ministering spiritually, uh, visiting the sick, praying for people, uh, ministering, teaching the word, uh, also to handling uh, 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 disputes between members and things like that, and complaints and things like that as well. And then there's the other side. The other side is where you have uh, uh, elders handling financial things. And now, now, I truly believe that uh, the elders that handle financial things, sometimes you just can't just get an elder over there because you want to call it an elder over there because some elders cannot handle money. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, I'm not talking about stealing money. I'm talking about counting money. Amen. I ain't talking about stealing right now. Amen. I'm just talking about keeping up with the money. I mean, if your husband already bad with a checkbook, why would you want him over the... Anyway, praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But that's a whole different subject. Praise God. But many times we put people in positions because they, you know, they're good, they're nice, they come to church. And most of the time those leadership get into position because, oh, they're good people. You know, uh, you'll get a phone call like this. Hey, uh, hey, this, uh, this, is, this is Bob over at the church. Hey, hey, John there? Yeah, John, let me talk to you, man. You know, you come to church, you got a good wife, your family look good. Man, you think about being an elder? Well, hold on a second. You don't know Bob know the Bible. You don't know Bob have a relationship with God. You just want you just see him coming to church and he's looking good. He's driving a nice car. Maybe gave a lot of money. So you place him as an elder, and he has no clue whatsoever about the Word of God. Thank you for that. <laughs> Amen. You don't know Bob having problems. But see, because most people, when they hear eldership, they hear ministry, they immediately think about promotion because, see, we are generated and motivated by succeeding. And so when we hear somebody talking about, oh, man, I want ministry, I want ministry. Yeah, yeah, but you want ministry, but you don't want the responsibility of ministry. What you want is the ability to talk to somebody and tell them that you're a minister. That's the problem. That's the problem. Anybody, you don't have to be a minister to preach. Some of y'all preaching good. Y'all haven't been no dame by nobody. Shoot, I hear y'all preaching. Boy, y'all be preaching good talking to the father. Go ahead. I'm going to take an offering up. Y'all preaching so good. Y'all need to be a minister to preach. You need to be able to teach the word of God right where you are. But sometimes because we're in a society that, that feeds us with, I got to have a title. And that's religion, man. That's so religion. 
You know, give me a title and then I'm going to do the work. How many times is that? I mean, that don't even happen at your job. They don't make you no supervisor until you qualify to do it. And if they, yeah, you know, amen. But at church, man, and that's the thing about it, you know, the thing of it is, too, sometimes we get leadership. I'm going to close here. We get leadership that can't lead on their job, and they get an opportunity to lead in the church, and they show out. They can't lead on their job, but they show out on church. I'm the big saint in this place. Yes, sir, I'm the big saint in this place. Shoot, did you see my ordination? <laughs> Amen. The only scripture they know is Jesus wept. <laughs> see, sometimes we do that because it, 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 it's in us to have this promotion, man. I, I want to be seen. And not really necessarily seen, but I want to be respected, man. And so I think that just being a minister is a part of the respect. And we lose it out. They respect. Thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, we didn't have enough time to share everything, but that doesn't mean you cannot get the CD in its entirety. Yes, you can. You can get today's lesson absolutely free by calling the number on the screen right now. There's a number right there. Call that number right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. They're going to send it out to you absolutely free. Now, this is the only way that you'll be able to receive this CD absolutely free now by calling the number now you can get the entire series for twenty dollars or more that's a special for those that are viewing us today you can call the number on the screen and they'll be able to send that entire series out to you for twenty dollars or more and it will really truly bless you now today's cd is absolutely free now i want to pray for you right now if you're not saved if you're not born again if you have no relationship with jesus christ today is your day to have that relationship with god notice what i said not religion but relationship with Christ. Having a relationship with Christ will cause your life to be at a whole different level of increase. And not only prosperity, but prosperity comes with it, but also to the blessings of favor on your life. Also to the peace that passes all understanding. Praise God. And most of all, that your name will be written in the Lamb Book of Life. Glory to God. That heaven is your home. Praise God. Let me pray for you right now. Just say this prayer along with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me. Of all my sins, known and unknown, I renounce them all. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer, meant it with your whole heart. We here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church want to bless you. We want to send you out a free CD. We're going to send you out a disciple manual. And we're going to send you out a daily devotion. All you have to do is say, hey, I got saved today. I got born again today. Or you can say, I rededicated my life to Christ today. We want to send this out to you absolutely free. Now, the second thing that you can do for us is to get in a Bible teaching church, somewhere that's going to teach you the word of God, where you're going to be able to grow, where you're going to be able to uh, flourish, where you're planted. It's going to be awesome. I got to get you in that place. So if you would. Go to our website right now. Go to the comment section. Put your name and which area you live in, and we'll definitely send you out some suggested churches that you can try out in that area. Now, if you are ever in the Goose Creek uh, area in South Carolina or Charleston area, Somerville area, wherever you are in South Carolina, you want to come. I would love to have you here. I would love to meet you. Lady Lisa and I would love to shake your hand and greet you and appreciate you coming for being a part of our service today. Now, it was a blessing coming to you today. I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church telling you to experience new life. See you next time. And so sometimes they're disqualified because of the ways they live. you got to continually stay in that. Paul kept telling them, continually stay in the faith. Continually watch yourself. So that's the key is that if you're going to be an elder, you need to learn how to govern yourself. You cannot have others to govern you. you got to learn how to govern yourself because if you don't govern yourself, you cannot govern God's people. Y'all been blessed today. Blooming where you are planted. Part 2. Call now for a free CD of today's broadcast. Dial 1-866-910-LIFE. That's 1-866-910-5433. Dr. Easley would like you to have this free CD. Also, don't forget Dr. Easley's offer to receive this entire series for a love offering of $20 or more. Call our phone representative at 866 910 Five four three three today to get this offer. We are waiting for your call. 
visit our website at newlifegcsc.org where you'll find more series by Dr. Easley. Join us for an intercessory prayer call Tuesday and Thursday mornings from 7 o'clock a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Please call in by dialing 605-475-5950 in our access code 530-2859. Join us Tuesdays and Thursday mornings from 7 o'clock a.m. to 7.30 a.m. We would like to invite you to connect with Dr. Easley on Twitter at Dr. Dexter Easley, on Facebook, facebook.com, NL, CF, GC, SC, on YouTube, Dexter Easley Ministry, and visit our website at newlifegcsc.org. Stay connected. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Bridger. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church, located at 111 South Florida Street in East Brooklyn, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning. So if I don't know how to operate in faith for my finances, you know, nobody won't talk about faith in the finances, but I need faith for my finances. Because every month, there's people calling me about a bill. If they're not calling me, it came in the mail, so to me, that's just like calling. Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. Open your Bible. I'm not going to be too long today, I don't think. You know, we've been talking about this is the year of the Lord's release. Last week I gave you six biblical usages for money. First thing I told you was, number one, to support the kingdom. Number two was to pay your tithes, pay your, pay, yeah, support the kingdom. Number two, pay your taxes. Because Jesus said pay your tithes and your taxes too. Number three, Money is, God gives us money so we can pay our personal debts. Amen. 
personal debts. The Bible says, owe no man nothing but to love him. So God wants us to be financially responsible. You don't go out and make bills and have no intention on paying them. That's how people ruin their credit. And you know, and in this country, blaze God, you got to have credit to kind of just move around. You may not want a credit card, but you need one for times like when you need to rent a car or book a hotel room. That don't mean you got to use it if you just pay it off before it comes due. It's like you never had it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, so you got to protect your credit because the Bible talks about how a good name is better than silver and gold. Now, don't, don't go for any of these trick games or gimmicks. I guess I'm right here because it's the Holy Ghost. What people tell you, they can repair your credit. Credit cannot be repaired. You can rebuild it, but you cannot repair it. Did you get that? Some of y'all didn't even write that down. You will pay a financial advisor $150 just to tell you that. So don't let nobody tell you or charge you for rebuilding your credit. They can't do it. That's a gimmick. That's game. Way to take your money. And that three hundred and fifty or hundred and fifty dollars they gave you gave them, you could have sent it on the bill. Yeah. But don't go out and make bills. You wouldn't want nobody to come get your money and don't want to pay you back. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Some of y'all will make the news around here and buy some money on the on. He owe me fifty cent, man. I'm gonna kill him. So you don't do that. He wants us to pay our debts. Oh no! Everybody say, "Oh no, man, oh, man. Nothing, nothing but to love it." See, I really believe God wants to move us into a place of debt freedom. See, because it's stuff on your heart and your mind, man. I just stepped into something. It's stuff on your heart and your mind you want to do and accomplish and achieve, but one of the main reasons why you can't do it because you're so much in debt. Good secret, good secret. When he gets you out of debt, don't go back in. Okay? Now, I guess I'm just here. We're going to attack this thing. Look, on the credit card, this is how you start getting out of debt. You find first the smallest bill that you have. Pay that one off. A little bit out of time, but pay it off. When that credit card or whatever that is gets paid off, keep, try to keep it active, but don't use it unless it's extremely necessary. Then you go and attack another bill. Some bills you're going to have for a little while unless you get what they call a windfall or some kind of financial miracle or you come into an inheritance, you know, like house notes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a house cost $100,000 except something happened for you supernaturally. God bless you. It's going to be unlikely that you'll be able to just go in there and just drop $100,000 at one time. Amen. We believe it can happen. Amen. But see, you got to have, that's why I'm going, hopefully today if I get enough time, about your faith to make that thing happen. See, somebody say, faith is my trigger. Faith is my trigger. See, because I could come here and teach you. I'm already in my message. Every week, uh, every week, week in, week out, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we can come here every day of the week if you want to. But if you don't believe anything that the preacher, you watch on television, listen to the radio, or sit under that ministry is saying, then how many know you can't have what they're talking about? Amen. Somebody say, faith is my trigger. I'm going somewhere. But so you want to work on that bill. When you get down paid, then you're going to attack your another one. Don't try to go at the big ones. That's right. Amen. That's right. I'm, I got Bible for bad. Though your beginning be small, your latter end should greatly increase. So, you, you know, I know you need Dillard's, J.C. Penney's. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Belts. Yeah. Somebody, even Kmart got credit card now. Don't they? Oh, they got rid of it? Yeah, they used to have one. They did have a credit card at Kmart a little while back, I can remember. It was amazing to me. Oh, y'all gonna get full credit on him? Mr. Sam Walton. But you attack those bills that you can see and handle. It's like when your faith is learning how to operate in faith, it's like this. You have to set obtainable goals. You don't go out talking about you in faith, believing for a million dollars, and you couldn't believe for a hundred thousand. See, some people think faith just grows automatically, but faith has to be processed through. That's right. See, so I, I'm processing now, getting out of debt, so I can live my dreams. Now it's gonna take discipline. Everybody say self-discipline. Self -discipline. 
to move into this arena because now all of my bad compulsive buying habits I have to discipline them so no longer can I just go to the store and just go on a spending spree or spend money that I don't have write this down credit is spending money that you don't have see when you flowing and using credit like that then you really got to have faith because you just spent some money that you didn't physically have and by the 30th the 28th the 15th or whatever the due date is your faith had to manifest that payment so if I don't know how to operate in faith for my finances, you no, know, nobody won't talk about faith in the finances, but I need faith for my finances. Because every month, there's people calling me about a bill. If they're not calling me, it came in the mail, so to me, that's just like calling. So from one period of time to another period of time, I got to release faith to meet that need. Now watch. If you already know everything you got to have, let's just do it real quick. Just a quick, quick sketch of a budget. Light, gas, water, rent or mortgage, car payment, lease insurance on the car, then insurance on your life. So we already talked about seven categories of things that every month I got to be releasing faith for. So, so now you understand, get Hebrews 11 and 6, it's like just somebody, y'all looking at me like he ain't gave us no scripture. I'm, I'm talking scripture. But Daphne, I'm talking scripture. I'm talking scripture. All right, read it. Hebrews 11 and 6. There it is up there, but I'm going to let you read it. Ready, read it. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I, you have to live a lifestyle of faith on purpose, Robert. I have to get up every morning of my life knowing that God is going to meet my need. Now, some people are stuck at just getting their need met. But I want to move into another arena. I want the desires of my heart. And I can have them because he said if I delight myself in him, he would give me. See, so, so most of them stuck on, you know, you heard this, the Lord promised to meet your need. He promised you some other things too. But all the gifts and the promises of God are received through faith. Somebody say faith is my trigger. All right, watch this. Let's, let's do this real quick. Come on. So we worked on them bills. So each one I set obtainable goals, even with my faith. Let's say, I don't know. You want to move towards this owning the car you always dreamed about. But notice what I said. You want to move towards it. So what kind of car can I drive now? So I have to set my faith on obtaining what I can obtain now. Because now faith is. So now watch. Once I get this one, I got to act like this one is the one I'm dreaming about. The house, if I'm believing God for a bigger house, Steve, the, the house that I'm in now, I got to treat it like it's already the mansion. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Get in position. Come on. See, so, so now what am I doing? Write this down. I'm focusing my faith. So because faith is a go-giver. It, it has to have something that it goes and get. It's like a golden retriever. I shoot it, but the dog go out there and get it and bring it back to me. Watch, if the dog got to go out and swim in the lake, he going to get it. If he had to run through the woods and run the deer down, he going to show me where the deer is. I turn them loose, they going to take me to the coon. Them beagles going to jump them, them, squir them rabbits and them squirrels every time. My faith is my golden retriever, man. It is my go-getter. Come on, say it. My faith, my faith is my go-getter. Go now do this, do this, and faith is my trigger. Faith is my trigger. Click, 
Click. Click. See? Because I could teach you from now that Jesus come. But if you don't believe nothing I'm teaching you, you can't receive it. Come on, say faith is my trigger. Come on over here, Hebrews. Y'all don't believe me. Let me show you this. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to go and dive right on in it. Y'all, we're going to read those first couple of verses now. We're going to take our time with it because, see, it's going to be, I'm going to drop something so heavy on you in a few minutes, I'm going to have to leave. I'm, I'm serious, because I'm going to need your spirit man in a certain place to even receive what I'm saying to you. Write this down. There are three dimensions to your spiritual diet. The Bible says, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word. So milk is for babies. He say, but meat is for them that are full age. That means they have matured. But then there's revelation. Revelation knowledge is for them that spend time with the Holy Ghost. Now, we can, we, we can regress it just like we progressed it. Because what is milk but petrified meat? Milk is meat before it's meat. It has all the protein, calcium, niacin, all of the beneficial things that a steak has in it. And we know this process can be reversed because now they got these machines like the, the ninja and, and the, 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 the juice makers where you put solids in it. And it, and it puts it, and it turns the solid into a liquid. So then what was solid became liquid. Watch it though. That means what was liquid became solid. Think about your human anatomy. You was liquid before you was muscle and bone. Before you got birth, water had to break. Come on, let's read. Watch this now. Take your time with it. Don't rush. Ready? Read the first verse. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of an inner into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Now we're going to stop because everybody's not reading. Faith comes how? So without faith it's impossible to please God, but in order for me to get faith, I got to read this Bible out loud. Because faith comes how? Faith comes how? So this is not a reading drill. I'm not trying to find out how, you, how good you can read. I'm trying to teach you how to operate in the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. So when I read the word out loud, I get faith for what I hear. Amen. Now say this with me. The Bible, the Bible is God is speaking to me speaking about me. About me. Amen. Amen. So right now when I'm reading this, this is God personally speaking to me. Yeah. We're not just reading the Bible. We are reading the Bible, but we are reading what we connote as the Word of God. Amen. So when I read the Word of God out loud, I'm hearing the voice of God. Yes. So now you see why it's imperative that I always take time to read the Bible out loud because I want to hear my daddy talk to me. Many people are misguided because their daddies never talk to them. It's some confused young men and women because their daddies never talk to them. So when I open the Bible and I read the word out loud, my heavenly father is talking to me. Show you how powerful the word of God is. 
Go back two more chapters. Go to chapter two. I want you to read verse one and verse two. All right, y'all got it? I say you got it? All right, ready? Read it. an angel in the Bible. There are several angels, but one that they, they name all the time. Yeah. Whenever God got ready to send a message to mankind, he used this angel named Gabriel. Amen. Gabriel's name means messenger. So if you name your child Gabriel or Gabriel or Gable, you just called him a messenger yeah. or her a messenger. So don't be surprised if they grow up and start preaching. Amen. You spoke it into their lives. Amen. Ain't nobody in here but me. Yeah. If you name your child Zoe, you expect them to live an abundant life. Because Zoe is Greek for the God kind of life. So that child probably will grow up full of faith. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, you do know your name means something. So he says, if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. When, a when Gabriel broke through in Daniel chapter 9 or 10, 10 spoke with Daniel, what Gabriel said shortly came to pass. When Gabriel came to Mary, told her she would conceive and bear a son, not knowing a man, the word spoken by the angel came to pass. When he went to Joseph and told her, don't put this woman away, the word he spoke came to Look at somebody say the word of God is steadfast. Now, what he wants us to get, get to the place where we really realize is that I need to be resting. Wow, wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time, on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here's the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store going to the category titled new and clicking on life television network you can also tune into life radio network by going to the website www.tunein.com going to the search bar typing in life radio network and there you will find our station for those of you who are in chickasaw or the surrounding areas you can tune in to us on 87.9 fm you can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. 
We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network, thank you for your continued support. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent, and that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you, and I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter, and in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers, but most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be we have a place that we can meet around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens as iron, so does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, you may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call. All you got to do is pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom, or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God, and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you, and keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast.
Word of Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue, on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. Let's look here in the Romans, the fourth chapter. Uh, let's move on a little and we'll, we'll deal with this other. In the fourth chapter of Romans, uh, Verse 3, it says, What saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. Now notice, he believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. This was Abraham. Now when we come over to verse 13, it says, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham and his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now it's not through the law, the old law of works, but through the righteousness of faith. Now come down to verse 16. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is the law, but that also which is the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now it's through grace. See, it's, it's through faith. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace. Now he's telling you something here, that the only way you can enter into the grace of God is through faith. Now let me give you the definition the Lord gave me a grace many years ago. It changed my life in the way that I look at some scriptures and the things that Paul said about grace. He said, grace is my willingness to use my power and my ability on your behalf even though you don't deserve it. Now see, all I'd have heard that grace is unmerited favor, and it is that. We can understand that. That's true. But the, what the Lord said to me, he said, uh, uh, now, if I'd just been in favor of you being saved, if you could figure out a way to save yourself, it wouldn't help you a whole lot, would it? So grace is more than just unmerited favor. He said, grace is my willingness to use my power and my ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. I saw a cartoon not long ago. This man and his wife showed up in heaven and, and is talking to St. Peter and, and, and there was a throne over there and God sitting on the throne and, and this, <laughs> this wife was lecturing her husband and said, now whatever you do, don't demand what you deserve. <laughs> no, you don't want what you deserve. You want mercy and grace. Grace is God's willingness. Now here's the way the Lord showed it to me. This was back when when uh, Jimmy Carter was president. He had made the statement. He said, now I'm in favor of a certain bill that's before Congress. Now if they pass the bill and get it to my desk, I'm in favor of it, I will sign it. But I'm not going to get personally involved in lobby for it. And, that, and what the Lord said to me, he used that and said, now you see, if, if I'd have been willing that the world be saved if they could figure out how to save themselves, See, I'd have been willing. that had been unmerited favor, all right. But he said it wouldn't have helped him if I didn't get personally involved in it. He said, grace is my willingness to get personally involved, to use my power and my ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. 
Now, if you'll take that definition with all the things that Paul said about it, it'll change what the Bible's been saying to you for years. Be strong in grace, Paul said. Be strong in God's willingness. It's not enough just to know that God's able. You've got to be strong in his willingness to do it. Now, watch over here. Come over here to the fifth chapter of Romans, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, ye have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. The only way that you have access into the grace of God is through faith. You can get things through faith you can't get any other way. You can't get it through the law. You can't get it by being good. You, I was telling the pastor, I was, one day I was, I wasn't doing anything spiritual. I'll tell you what I was really doing. I was up in the top of a tree building a deer stand. I'm just hammering away. And the Spirit of God said, the Lord said to me, He said, what some people call faith is not faith at all. It's just high expectation based on wrong information. I just laid my hammer down. Sit down. I'm going to listen to this sermon. And he went on to say that how that people believe that, well, well now, I believe God will do this because, because I, I, I believe I'm worthy of this. One lady I remember said to Brother Hagin, he was telling a story about it, said, she said, now, I, I just don't understand it. She said, Brother Hagin, can you, can you help me? She said, said uh, uh, I'm not a better Christian in this church than I am. And said, not a more spiritual person in this church than I am. But she said, now, when it, when it comes to getting healed, uh, come down with sickness or something, said, said, I always end up having to go to the doctor and have an operation. But said, now you take my husband's side of the family. And she said, now we're, I'm faithful to church. I pay my tithes. I do all these things. And I'm always there. And, and said, then, then here's the husband's side of the family. And said, they're not really faithful. They just come now and then. Don't really pay the tithes. They give now and then. Said, but if they ever get sick, they come running to the church. Get hands laid on them get healed. Can you tell me why? He said, well, not knowing any more than you said I, I would say that they're quick to forgive and not hold a grudge. She said, well, that's exactly right. Said, they just don't let anything bother them. Now, me, she said, I'll tell you, I just can't hardly forgive anybody. <laughs> well, she let the cat out of the bag, didn't she? See, she has high expectation based on wrong information. She believes because she's a good Christian, she's the most spiritual person. She thinks she's the most spiritual person in that church. That God will heal her. She believes she merits healing. She's under the law of works. And the Bible says she's under the curse. Yeah, the Bible says that. Now turn with me to it. I, I want you to see it. I think people think I make this stuff up. <laughs> Go over there to Galatians. <clears throat> In Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, <clears throat> and then the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel to Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they that be of faith are blessed by faithful Abraham. For as many as of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. She believed because of her good works she ought to be healed. And this scripture says she's under the curse of the law. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth those things shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed to everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now what we need to realize is that what, what God is saying here through the Apostle Paul, come on over to, to the... Uh, fifth chapter <clears throat> I 
verse 3 says, uh, For I testify again to everyone that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now he's saying if they're going to do part of the law, if they're going to be under the law, you've got to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect to you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, talking about the law of works, ye are fallen from grace. In other words, you can't enter into the grace of God. So this woman saying, not a better Christian in this church than I am. She got over into the, the, to the law of works. She believes that she's going to get healed by her good works. She's under the curse, and the Bible says she's fallen from grace. She can't reach grace because it's not a faith. She thinks it's merit. High expectation based on wrong information. Had a man the other day to just tell me, he said, oh, he said, I've got all these hip problems and had a hip replaced and all this, and I know, he says, God's able to heal me if I could just get worthy. I thought, oh, there's the problem right there. There's the problem. And I gathered up a bunch of tapes and books and <laughs> going to give them, get them to it. Because if he'll continue in the Word, it'll set him free. Yeah. See, he doesn't know that Jesus made him worthy. It's by faith that you enter into the grace of God. Faith in the blood of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. With the righteousness of God in him. It's not our righteousness. It's his righteousness, but it's been imputed to us. Now, while we're on that, we're just following the Holy Ghost. That aren't You ever wonder why they call a sinner a sinner? It's because he sinned. He's doing just what he does best. And he can't quit. He can't quit. That's why he called him a sinner. Same reason you call a prisoner a prisoner. He's in prison and he can't get out. That's the reason you call him a prisoner. Now see, I was on death row at one time. But they let me out. I was just visiting. <laughs> But a prisoner, he can't get out. A sinner is a sinner because he sins and he can't quit. He has no way out. He needs a Savior. So when we understand the law of faith here, you realize that a sinner... He's just doing what he does best, and he just can't quit. There's no way to quit. But you get over in the New Testament, and John said, I write unto you that you sin not. Now, he's talking to Christians. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And if we confess our sins, you know, John, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, if you get rid of all the un, what happens? you got righteousness, haven't you? Through the law of faith. Through the law of faith. And that's the only way you can obtain it. See, some people try to get it through high expectation based on wrong information. The just shall live by faith. It's the law of God. Now, Paul said in Romans 8, he said, The carnal mind's enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You can't believe your head what you can believe with your heart. So the, the, the law of God is a law of faith. It is the law of the New, New Testament. And then Paul goes on and turn over there to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter 10, verse 4, Paul said, For Christ is an end of the, for the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That ended the law for righteousness right there. For Moses describeth the righteousness, which is the law that the man that doeth those things shall live by them, but the righteousness which is of faith. Now let me stop there and read you again what we read back over here, lest you've forgotten what we read about what it said about Abraham in chapter 4. 
said, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now when it says his seed, that includes us because Galatians says, the third chapter, I believe is the last verse, says, If we be Christ, then are we Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So it's through the righteousness which is a faith, that phrase, the righteousness which is a faith. Now Paul tells you right here in the 10th chapter, verse 6, For the righteousness which is a faith speaketh on this wise. Now first he's going to tell you what the righteousness of faith wouldn't say. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep that is to raise Christ again from the dead? Now what's he talking about? He's talking about what people say, you've said it and I've said it sometime myself, Lord, just come down and touch me. If you'd come down and touch me, I'd get healed. He doesn't have to come down and touch you. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. He's not coming. He's seated at the right hand of the Father until his enemies have made his footstool. He's coming back to receive the church, but he's not coming to personally come to the earth and do something for you. But now watch what Paul says. He first tells you what it wouldn't say. See, Then in verse 8 he tells you what the righteousness which is of faith would say. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. It's as close to you, he says, as getting it in your mouth and speaking it into your heart. Now isn't that simple? Now in the 12th chapter of Matthew, you'll find, uh, I, I believe it's, it's 12th chapter of Matthew, or maybe it's either 12th Matthew or, or Luke. Jesus said, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, he brings forth good things. Evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, he brings forth evil things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the core, the center of his being, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In other words, what's in you is going to come out. You can't hide what's on the inside of you. It'll come out. You know, when they had plane crashes and over in the Canary Islands, and uh, the, the recorder in the cockpit recorded what the pilot said when they saw this airplane about to hit them. They used God's name in vain and said, He's going to kill us all. That's what was in their heart. What's in the heart gets in your mouth. And uh, Jesus, in a discourse, you know, he went on to say right there in that when he was talking about that, he said, For out of the bones of the heart and the mouth speaketh, and he said, A man will give account of every idle word that he speaks in the day of judgment. That means non working words, words that don't work for you. In other words, you can speak words based on the authority of the word of, <coughs> word of God, and it'll work for you, it'll change some situations and circumstances. First thing it do is cause faith to come. It'll renew the mind and cause you to begin to think like God thinks. But he said, what saith the righteousness which is of faith says the word is nigh thee, it's in thy mouth and in thy heart. Now see, they knew that when we were going to school, that if you said it with your mouth long enough, you'd, you'd believe it and it'd, get, it'd become a part of you. You didn't even have to think then. Four times four is 16, you know. You didn't have to sit down and figure it out. It gets in you. It just becomes a part of you. And if the word is in you, faith is there. Now here's the point I want to show you what Paul's talking about. When we talk about people that don't have any faith, uh, lack of faith is just a symptom. It's not the problem. The problem is lack of the word abiding in them. Because this word is filled with faith. If this word abides in you, faith is there. But you always know where, where people stand when they say, well, yeah, I know the Bible says that, but now here's what I believe. Or here's what happened to me. See, they've cast out the Word. The Word's not their final authority. So they go on talking, doubt, and unbelief, and, and all those things. Now, if you notice here, Paul connects this with that, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You believe with your heart. You can't believe with your head what you can believe with your heart. Now according to these verses, if a sinner came up here and confessed, Jesus is the Lord of my life, when he said that, the devil was the Lord of his life. But because he based his faith on this scripture and believed it and proclaimed that Jesus was his Lord, all the demons of hell can't stop him from being born again. 
And that may be the only scripture he knows. But faith for healing, faith for finances, you've got to have the word concerning finances or healing. See, you can be highly developed in one area and have no faith in the other area. Because the word wasn't in you. Your faith will never rise any higher than your confession of the promise of God. Now, when it says it's in your mouth and in your heart, think with me for a minute. We have two sets of ears. We have the outer ear. And we have the inner ear. We also have a middle ear. But the outer ear is for the outer man. The inner ear is for the inner man. It's very simple. Paul said the outward man perisheth, but the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, if you, you plug up your ears and your voice will be louder to you. Why? Because Jesus, you know, when Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bring forth good things, for out of the bumps of the heart the mouth speaketh. Then Paul comes along and says, the word is nigh you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. You put those together and you understand that what you speak out of your mouth is picked up by the inner ear and fed directly into the, what the Bible calls the heart. That's the way you plant the seed of the Word. Whether it's God's Word or whether it's the devil's Word, what you speak out of your mouth is planted Amen. in the heart. And the more, you, now, you know, it, it doesn't happen. You didn't just, don't just say it one time and it becomes a part of you. It's what you say over and over and over. You've heard people say, well, the Lord knows I want to forgive them, but I just can't. How long have you been saying it? Forty years. Worked real good, didn't it? If they just said it the other way, they could have what they say. See, they've had what they said for forty years. It's helped them in bondage. But you just turn that around and say it on the positive side. Word is nigh is in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, when you first heard your voice on a tape recorder, you got embarrassed, didn't you? He said, oh, that's not me. What's the way we've been hearing you all the time? The reason it sound like you to me and not you to you is because the first time you ever heard yourself totally with the outer ear. Your voice is picked up by the inner ear, fed directly into what the Bible calls the heart. That's why Jesus said if you had faith as a seed, you would speak it. You would say it. The more you say it, the more you believe it, the more you believe it, the more you say it. Faith cometh by hearing you speak it to get it in the heart in abundance. Then when it's abundantly in the heart, then you speak things that change situations. <clears throat> you speak words that will change situations. But the first stage of confessing the promise of God is doing very little to change your situation. First of all, it's changing you, changing your attitude, renewing your mind, getting you to think like God thinks. Now, remember what God told Joshua. Now, now, notice how all these things work together, even in the Old Testament through the New Testament. He told Joshua, said, let not the book of the law depart out of your mouth. That means keep it in your mouth. Now, that's the word of God they had for that day, see. Keep saying what God said, in other words, that thou mayest observe to do. Now, what's observe mean? It means to sort of see it, doesn't it? In other words, if you speak the word of God... I have given, it's given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men, given to my bosom, I have abundance and no lack. My God has met my need. Thank God I have the wisdom of God. Any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Giveth to all liberally, upbraideth not, it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. He that wavers like a wave, sea driven, the wind tossed. Let not that man think that he'll receive anything of the Lord. Well, when you pray that, believe it. Release your faith in it. Get that on the inside of you. Now, first of all, that is causing you to think like God thinks. Doing very little change your circumstance or situation. But when it gets abundantly in your heart, the more you hear it, the more you believe it. Faith cometh by hearing, right? See, that's what Paul said right here in verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Now, who's he talking about hearing? He said, the word is nigh you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. Did you notice it didn't say it's in your pastor's mouth and in your heart? He said it's in your mouth and in your heart. 
You believe more what you say than what anyone else says. Now, don't misunderstand me. You get some faith by hearing what your pastor said and certainly gain some knowledge. But if you want to really develop your faith in the specific promises of God, you get those words in your mouth. The more you confess it, the more you'll believe it. Faith comes by hearing. Now, a psychologist will tell you if a person tells a lie long enough, they'll go to believe in it. And after a while, they're telling it for the truth. They'll, they'll swear everything in them says it's the truth. Faith cometh by hearing. Now, see, Paul said, so then faith cometh by hearing. Faith in God's Word comes by hearing the Word of God. Now, the other end of the spectrum is that if faith in God comes by hearing the Word of God, faith in the devil comes by hearing the words of the devil. Or faith in the weatherman or faith in the postman would come by hearing what he said. If he did what he, you know, said, I'll be there at 9 o'clock with the, the mail or whatever. Uh, if the weather forecaster would hit it five, six times in a row, you'd have faith in him. That's natural human faith. But the Word of God, you see, when you talk about the Word of God, you get the Word in your mouth and speak it into your heart. The more you say it, the more you believe it. Now, see, the Word is truth. Whether you believe it or not, it is truth. God bless you. We do appreciate you joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. I trust you've been blessed by the teaching and how that faith works in your life and how to get it to work for you. I mean, your confession will change your life. Now, we have a tape offer this week, and I'm excited about this offer. It's called The Law of Faith, offer number 2246. 2246, The Law of Faith, two audio cassettes for $10. Now, what do we mean, the law of faith? Paul calls faith law. In Romans, the fifth chapter, here's what Paul said about faith and the law of faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. In other words, Paul is saying, you don't have access into the grace of God except through faith. In other words, you have to come through faith in the blood of Jesus to have access into the promises of God and into the, the blessings of God. Now, the Apostle Paul said all the promises of God are yes and amen. Paul called faith a law in the third chapter. He said, do we then make void the law through faith? He says, God forbid. We establish the law. Now, he's not talking about establishing the law of the old covenant. He's talking about establishing the law of the new covenant. Faith is a law of the new covenant. In other words, under the old law, it was by works of the law, but now it's by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and faith in the covenant of God and the promises of God. So you only enter into it through faith. And that faith comes from the Word of God. Now, in this two-tape series, we talk about how that an airplane wing is designed to produce lift. There's no lift on that wing till it's thrust through the air. The same way the human spirit is designed that when you confess the Word of God, say what God said, it creates faith in the heart. And Paul said, faith works in the heart, it won't work in the head. He said, the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. It's the law of faith. That's tape offer number 22. Forty-six, ten dollars the law of faith. We have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. If you order by MasterCard or Visa, you'll get it much quicker that way. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, word is word. We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. To order the product offered on today's program, send your check or money order to Charles Capps Ministries. Or to place your order on Visa or MasterCard, call 1 877 396 9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel. Life Television Network, Chickasaw Mobile Preacher.
Today on the Believer's Voice of Victory, Gloria Copeland and Billy Grimm share how the shalom peace of God produces abundance, provision, and wholeness in all parts of your life. Now to begin our study, here's Gloria. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy's back with us. She's going to tell you some more good things. Are you wound up, Billy? I'm wound up, and I want to today establish that in that root word, shalom, from which shalom comes, the peace, peace that comes from being whole, mm -hmm. you cannot be whole unless your goods have been restored to you. Payment is in that word. You can see on the wheel the word payment, to pay. They are words that come from the root word shalom to make whole. And now we're going to look at that, where they're used in the Old Testament. Um, 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 1, if you have your Bible there with you. This is a story that we all are pretty well familiar with, uh, with Elisha the prophet and his miracles. This is one of them. 2 Kings 4, 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of prophets unto Elisha, saying... Elisha had a school for prophets. And it's interesting that this woman was a widow. Yeah, she was a widow. Oh, yes. Uh, this woman is a widow, and her son was a, her husband was one of the, uh, the prophets in the school of Elisha. And so she said to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. You could, go, you could in those days go into servitude, you know, the, the debt was paid. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in your house. And she said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all your neighbors, empty vessels, and borrow not a few. Now, Gloria... Remember when we studied about goodness? It's everything. God has yeah. everything, and it's limited only by one's yeah. capacity to receive. Think big. Think big. He told her, you go and borrow vessels, mm -hmm. and borrow not a few. In other words, get as many as you can carry in here. That's right. That's right. So that shows you, Gloria, in the Old Testament, you see the character of God. That's right. You can see the character that he provides fullness. He provides completeness. Yes. He provides abundance. That's right. That's right. Yes. So he said, go borrow these vessels, not a few. And when you come in, shut the door upon you and your sons and pour out unto all these vessels. So she had some oil. It's what you do with what you got and never mind how much you got. So she had that little pot of oil, and she began to fill those vessels. She could have said, well, I don't, I don't have anything to give, and I, all I've got is this little dab of oil. Right. And, and you know, what I, I, need with I, all the I need to keep that for myself. <laughs> yeah, and what about all these vessels here? But she evidently believed Elisha. She'd heard she the report. Faith, yeah. yeah, well, see, her son was in his school. Yeah. So she knew what he could do, what God did through him. So, in verse 5, 2 Kings 4, verse 5, she went from him and shut the door up on her and her vessels, her sons who had brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. She started pouring. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said unto her, There's not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. The oil stopped. You see, Isn't what God something? provided did not stop until her capacity ended. That's good. That's good. And remember what we read, that goodness, goodness of God is limited only Please. by one's capacity to receive. That's right. Whatever God has for me, whatever goodness he has for me, whatever wholeness he has for me, spirit, soul, body, finances, I'm the one who limits it. I limit it. Only with That's my right. capacity to receive. That's right. So what do I need to do? Work on my capacity. In that day, I should have gotten a few more pots. But in this day, I should build my faith. And say words. And say words to release it. Yes. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So, 2 Kings 4, 7, she came and told the man of God, Elisha, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. This word pay, it's a form of shalom. It's a form of shalem, excuse me, 
the root word. It is definitely included in her debtors, and God was not willing to leave them without. He wanted her to pay her debts. He didn't want all those people who had loaned to her to be without being whole. Yes. So for them to be without being whole, which is God's way, uh, she had to pay them, let you lend them. She had to pay them money. And he provided the money to do it because that is God's way. He'll pay your debts if you'll trust him. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. I know that. You know true. that for sure, don't you, girl? I do. Now, this is from Psalm 37, 21. And I'm reading to you from uh, um, a Hebrew translation. The wicked one borrows and he will not repay, while the righteous one graciously gives. That's Psalm 37, 21. That word repay, is a, it, its root word is shalem whole, be whole, complete. So uh, they have a note in the Art Scrolls that comes from the Art Scrolls to Halim. And Art Scrolls put this note. It does not say that he does not pay later when the debt becomes due. Rather, it says he will not pay. When he first borrowed, he had no intention of ever repaying. That's the wicked one. He mm -hmm. wills not to repay. That's different. That's a different thing. Now, Make compensation for injury. We read about this yesterday. We're going to read some more scriptures from Leviticus 24, 18. He that kills a beast shall make it good. Beast for beast. Now that word, make it good, is shalom. It comes from the root, make whole. If you kill a beast, if you kill your farmer's, your next door neighbor's ox, then you've got to pay him for him, for that ox. Now let's go on down to, uh, those, to a next, couple of next verses. Uh, Leviticus 24, 19. And if a man cause a blemish to his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done unto him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him. The Art Scrolls has a note on this. This passage contains perhaps the most misunderstood phrase in the Torah, mm. an eye for an eye. The unlearned maintain that it originally meant literally, but was later interpreted by the sages to mean monetary compensation. That's wrong. The Torah, the first five books of the Bible, never required anything other than monetary damages. In addition to the oral tradition from Sinai, that means when Moses was up on Sinai, God gave him the written word, but he also gave him an oral word, and Moses spoke that to Joshua, and Joshua spoke it to the other, to the other. So from the time of Sinai, the Talmud proves that on logical grounds and through scriptural exegesis, that the verses cannot be understood in any other way except monetary. The sages, back from the time of Moses, expounded that these penalties are to be understood as monetary payment for damages. For example, a singer with a mangled finger, uh, he doesn't lose as much of the value of that finger as a pianist who would lose his whole living. Yeah. So you've got to satisfy according to the loss of that, of that but the, the Hebrew word translated make it good. The art scrolls, when it translates and make it a restitution, it always has to do with paying back what is lost. Restoring. Restoring. Now, Jesus, when he's in the New Testament, let's look at Mark chapter 5. He knows all this principle. We studied yesterday about that woman, that Shunammite woman, that made that little room for the prophet. And then the prophet told her, and he raised her son from the dead. And then the prophet told her, you know, there's going to be a, a, a famine in the land. You need to go down to the land of the Philistines. So she goes down to the land of Philistines. And then after seven years, she comes back to the king, and she knows the principle. She knows she's supposed to get back and not lose. So she goes to the king, and she said, I want my land back. And he says, Right at that very time, the servant of Elisha happened to be telling the king all about, because the king asked, who put that question in his mind? God did. And the king asked, uh, tell me the miracles that Elisha did. 
So he's telling him all the miracles, and he tells about this raising of the dead. And he looks and sees this woman and her son. He says, there she is right there. And so then the woman says, I want restitution because she knew the character of God. She knew what she had done for the prophet, and she knew that she could be paid back. Now, Jesus knew all these principles, of course. He's walking. When Jesus is walking on the earth, the only Bible they've got is the Old Testament. But he walks in it. I mean, he does not. He fulfills every jot, every tittle. Now, look at here, and he knows the character of God. Look at here. We're going to talk about this woman with the issue of blood. Uh, we're going to start with Mark chapter 5, verse 24. And Jesus went with him. This is uh, the ruler of the synagogue. His little daughter lies at home sick, you know. And this is right here. We're going to read from the Bible here. Okay. In Mark chapter 5, verse 24. And Jesus went with him. Uh, this is Jairus, we say. And he's going back because his little daughter's dying. Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood... 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch, but his clothes, I shall be what? Whole. Whole. Now, here she is. She doesn't speak Greek. She speaks Aramaic. Uh, and she reads the Bible if she has a Bible, which she probably doesn't because it was hard to get in those days. She's going to say, Shalem. She's going to say, I shall be Shalem. I shall be whole. That's that root word, Shalem. This word is translated in the New Testament as sozo. Sozo in the Greek is really the same as shalem in the, in the Hebrew. Sozo in the Greek where it says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. It's the word sozo. And that word sozo means whole. Everything is in it. Uh, Schofield, in his Bible, he said, that's an all-inclusive word. Salvation, the word they use for it, is a form of sozo in the New Testament. It's an all-inclusive word. It includes deliverance. It includes healing. It includes prosperity. It's the same thing as shalom in the Old Testament. The New Testament was written in Greek because the Greeks had come all over the world. They had Hellenized it, and Greek had become the trade language of the world. So those Aramaic-speaking apostles and writers in the New Testament, those Hebrew readers, they... they, they, they at least translated or wrote uh, for, the, for the world, the Gentiles. And the Gentile world spoke Greek. But that's not what she said. She said, if I may touch but his garment, I shall be shalem, made whole. Made whole. Or, and we translated it, the King James people translated it whole. But in the, in the Greek, it's sozo. So, Straightway the fountain of her body was dried up, verse 29, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She's made whole of it. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that dunamis had gone out of him, virtue, it says, or power in the King James, turned about and said, Who touched my clothes? The Greek there has the idea, he kept saying it over and over, Who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, You see the multitude thronging me? And you say, Who touched me? But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, Listen to what he said, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. She said her faith with her mouth. She said it with her mouth. And he replies to her three times. He uses a form of the word whole. He would have answered her in Hebrew or in Aramaic. Daughter, your faith has made you shalom. Go in shalom. And be shalem, 
of thy plague. So go shalim in, is, go in shalim, go oh. in wholeness. Go in peace, shalom, the peace that comes because you're whole, and be shalim of your plague. He uses a form of the word whole three times. Now, she said she's going to be made whole. And he says to her three times, your faith hath made you whole. Now, Gloria, I'm going to say something here that Brother Hagin, he said something. He say, he'll, he'll say something like this. Now, I believe what I'm going to say to you. I can't prove it by the word, but you can't prove that it's not so. Yes, I've heard him say that. You've heard him say that, haven't you, Globe? Okay, here's what I think. Why did the Bible bother to tell us that she'd spent all her money? It says here that uh, she was a woman who had an issue of blood 12 years. She suffered many things of many physicians and she spent all that she had. Trying to be well. Yeah. She spent everything she had. She spent her money. But she said, if I touch him, I shall be shalim. I shall be whole. And he said to her three times, you're going to be whole. You go in the peace that comes from being whole. You'll be whole. I think based on Old Covenant thought, Old Testament thought, it was under her the same as it was under the Shunammite woman. I believe this woman got her fortune back. She got her money back. Behold. I can't prove it. I can, I can prove the principle of it from the Old Testament. And you can't prove anywhere that it's the principle of God that she didn't get it back. Because she said, I'm going to be whole. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Go in shalom and be whole of your plague. When he said that, I believe that money started finding its way back to her. I believe it. Just like that woman, that, that woman with the oil, that woman with the shoe to meat woman, she got everything back. She did. We got the, we got the Old Testament principle. And, and, and it's so important that you understand, um, that you understand root words. And in those root words that she said, the root words to them, was her wholeness. It was her prosperity. If God told them in the Old Testament, if you even, even, if you even cause a man's donkey to fall into a hole, or you blemish an ox, you do something to him, you've got to pay him back, and you've got to add interest to it. Do you think God is any different? Does he live by another principle? No. He lives by the principle she said she's going to be whole. Jesus said three times she's going to be whole. And remember what Jesus said? I don't say anything the Father didn't say. Yeah. So the Father said, you're going to get it back. You're going to get back your fortune. You're going to be whole. You're not going to have this anymore. And all you Praise spend, God. And all you spend on all those physicians, you can get back. I can tell you right now, the devil, the Bible says, he's a thief. He comes to steal. To steal. To kill. Kill. And to destroy. And destroy. First thing it says about him is he's All a of thief. those things take away from All of those things somebody. take away. But in all that he thieved, you can get back plus interest. I believe it. Plus interest. Isn't that what he told him? You pay some interest on this here. That woman got her land back and she got that Shunammite woman and she got all that it had produced for those seven years. Praise God. And I imagine even in grout times it had produced some things. So here he is saying to this woman with the issue of blood, it's the same principle of the Old Testament. He didn't use Greek words. He's talking to her. She's talking to him. She said, Shalem. I want to be Shalem. I want to be whole. And he said, okay, you go. You're going to be Shalem. You go in peace, the peace that comes from being whole. Your faith made you whole. Amen. So, nothing missing. Nothing Nothing broken. missing. Nothing broken. And uh, I, I know my son-in-law um, suffered, um, well, he has a miracle healing from, uh, God replaced his pancreas. But I know that when the, there was that time when he was 27 days in a coma, he's a lawyer. And, um, you know, and it took him a while getting over it. The, the devil robbed. Sickness robs from you. Sure it does. It robs your peace. It robs your money. It robs, so Jesus wants you well. And if you can believe, how do you believe? How do you get it back? 
how do you increase your capacity? Hearing the word. Hearing the word. Faith comes to you. You say it with your mouth. You don't go around saying all day, I lost all my money. Mm -hmm. You go around saying, God's good. My faith makes me whole. My faith makes me whole. Glory to God. I touch his goodness by faith. And he'll show you how. But I'm telling you right now, Gloria, I hear people saying the wrong things, the wrong things, I the wrong things. I don't have a things. clue. But Even sometimes it, they're Christians and supposed to have a clue. the problem to themselves. That's right. Now remember that. When you speak negative words, when you speak lack words, when you speak lackness words about yourself and your situation, you are calling those things to yourself. Unless when you speak about those things, you speak what God says about it, then you're calling the blessing to yourself. You think that's just too simple. That's the way it is. And that's simple for you and me, Gloria. Yeah, Billy and I got it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for being here. We'll see you again in a moment. We are providing the study notes from our teaching free. Go to kcm.org slash notes. The notes for the broadcast will include the key points, scriptures, prayers, interactive questions. These notes follow along with us or for your personal Bible study or to teach a small group, something like that. It'll help you just immerse yourself deeper in the study of the Word. I'm telling you, this is good stuff, man. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. But believe it it in my heart and saying it with my mouth. Because my God loves me and gave himself for me in the name of Jesus, I am healed. April 5th through 7th, the Copelands welcome you to the 2018 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. May 4th through 5th, register now for the Radiant Women's Conference at the Marriott Hotel and Golf Club in Fort Worth, Texas. May 18th through 19th, Kenneth Copeland invites you to the Peru Victory Campaign at Eduardo Nibos Coliseum in Avenida Aviación, Lima, Peru. May 31st through June 2nd, join Kenneth Copeland Ministries at the Sacramento Victory Campaign at the Convention Center in Sacramento, California. For more information, go to kcm.org slash events. Shalom. I asked Miss Gloria, Sister Gloria, if I could receive the offering today. Today is offering day. Because I remember this verse. I I, I know, Gloria, the Lord brought it to my mind. Uh, In light of our study of shalom and how the root word is shalem, make whole, and how the words for pay, uh, give, uh, uh, restitution are all in the Old Testament forms of this word whole. So this is the New Testament. And this is the King James. It's Galatians 6.6. 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Yes. Now, Brother Hagin would say that's a little blind to us mm-hmm. because we normally don't talk today like communicate. Uh, we, we, we would use the word give. Him that, let him that is taught in the word give to him that teaches in all good things. Uh, the Amplified gives us a little more. It does what it says it will do. It amplifies the meaning. Let him who receives instruction in the word of God share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his support. So, here we are. Kenneth Copeland Ministries brings to you all over the world teaching. They, both Ken and Gloria, stand in the office of teacher. Ken stands in the office of prophet and teacher. Yes, he does. But they are teachers, and they communicate. I, don't, I didn't see people who communicate so much the word, who give so much the word. Now it tells you right here in the New Testament that you're supposed to give back. That lets you share in what they give. That lets the whole of the teaching that Praise they give. God. Bringing this to you today, you get to share in it. How do you share in it? You send in an offering. You can do it online. You can do it by snail mail. They have the information at the bottom. But you can say, Lord, I see it. I see the truth. I'm not going to leave this ministry lacking in anything. 
I want it to be whole. Yes, I want it amen. to be on every, as God said to Brother, Brother, Brother Copeland, every available voice. Right. Oh, they do their best. But I want you to know, folks, the gospel's free, but you've got to pray for the piping, getting it piped to you. That's right. And that is big-time pay when you come to television, when you come to getting this out on every available voice, when you come to Brother Copeland flying and Gloria flying all over the world, Nigeria. And, uh, they're going to, uh, they're going to uh, Guam, I believe. Iwo Jima someplace, I don't know. But anyway, they go, go, go. Praise God. And you don't go for free. Bless the Lord. Right. So you can be a part of it, but look at God's wonderful plan. When you give, yeah. it shall be given to you again. Praise Good God. measure, pressed Praise down, God. running over. And it says here, uh, whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. It says, he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap, reap life everlasting. Praise you God. are off, you're, you're sowing to the Spirit right now. You're sowing to the work of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to receive word back, and it's going to reap a crop. It'll reap a crop of people that will give God glory forever and ever. Yes. yes. Father, we pray over every person sowing into this offering. We believe with them for the big return, the hundredfold return, whatever return that we believe for, and we will not let it go. We'll no. get it. And so we believe for them, their blessing, blessing coming in on every way, unexpected blessings. Amen. And we amen. thank you for blessing all of us, Lord, and increasing all of us financially in our bodies. We thank you for healing. Heal the people today, Lord. Just uh, you, You've already done what it takes to do. You've already borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. And by your stripes, we were healed. So we take that we take that healing, and that's the way we take prosperity. The blessing is under, uh, uh, is under the old covenant. It's under the new covenant. Hallelujah. A God's financial way. blessing God's increases God's will. And that's why we, he has it. That's wh when we tithe, we get an increase. When we sow, we get an increase. You know what? God set it up where you and I should lack for nothing. It's the truth. That's what it means, whole. That is the will of God. Billy and I will be back on Monday. Until then, remember this. Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries has an exciting way for you to give and become a part God is doing. Text the letters KCM and the amount you'd like to give to 36609. If you prefer, you can also go to kcm.org slash give or call 800-600-7395. Text to give is available in the U.S. only. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music. KC promote your business or event. We have designed and printed thousands of flyers for businesses throughout the Gulf Coast. Postcards, business cards, club flyers, posters, event tickets, invitations, and much more. Already have your design? For a limited time, get 1,000 4x6 postcards printed for only $75. Same day printing on most orders. That's KC Downtown Pritchard. Visit us at kcphotographyandprinting.com or call 251-452-5200. Car smash? Hurt? Don't wait. No referral, no payment, no cash? No problem. Waiting one month, two months, three months, that's not good. The other car insurance say, why do you wait? One month, two months, three months. Now the court in D.C. will see you possibly today. I say, I'll see you right away. Don't wait. One month, two months, three months. One call, that's all, at 476-PAYING. The choice is yours. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. If you are on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. 
you may qualify to immediately receive a pain relieving brace at little or no cost friendly agents are standing by 24 7 to help you call the health hotline right now for details toll free our friendly representatives are standing by now to take your call we also have other pain relieving braces available for shoulder ankle and your back you may be eligible to receive these items and more at little or no cost to you as well call right now for details toll free our friendly representatives are standing by now to take your call Call the health hotline now. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Call the number on your screen right now. This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Jesus whooped him, stripped him, paraded him around, took the very power he used to bondage us. What was that power? The Bible says he took the law, nailed it to the cross, and strip the power from principalities. What was he saying? Every demon, every devil needed the law in your consciousness in order to get victory over you. But Jesus says, I stripped him. I took the ordinances. I nailed it to the cross. Principalities no longer have power over you. As long as you don't live under the law. I'm a world changer. This is Changing Your World with Creflo Dollar. Now from the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, here's Pastor Dollar with today's message. If you're going to put everything on the right foundation, you've got to re-examine everything you've been doing and put it in the right perspective. So now I am not praying, begging God to try to get to do something for me. If I believe it's already done, my prayer has turned into a, a time of saying what he's already said about it, thanking him for it, praising him for it, and ending up in worship and peace. It, 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 if I believe it's already done, prayer does not look like this. Oh, God, come on. Lord, I, I just need you, to, I need you to heal me. I need you to heal me right now. Because I know if you can heal me right now, yeah, everything going to be all right. Heal me, Jesus. Heal me, Lord. Heal me. No, 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 no. That's unbelief all day long. It's unbelief in the, what the blood has accomplished. Prayer doesn't look like that anymore. Prayer looks like this. It looks just like this. It says, Father, I thank you that 2,000 years ago you've already healed me. You've already declared in your word that by your stripes I'm already healed. Therefore, Lord, I receive it, and I am grateful and thankful that I am healed. Now, what are you doing? You're praying in tongues. God's giving you wisdom, supplying you with everything you need to be supplied with. Make sure you're in the right place. That makes sense. All these things happening. Now you have the gift of tongues, which is a grace gift. Amen. Same thing with fasting. I don't, I'm not fasting to try to get more power. See, when it comes to Jesus, we're always trying to say Jesus plus more. You got all the power you're ever going to get. So I'm not fasting to get more power. <laughs> I am fasting. The reason why I fast is because my spirit is already in line with the Word of God, but my mind may be out of line. And I am not going on a fast to get my mind to line up with my spirit, to line up with the finished works of Jesus. I'm not, my, I'm not fasting to reposition God. I'm fasting to reposition me. Everything changes when you believe it's done. Everything stays the same when you don't believe it's done and you get into the extreme of faith that says somehow you believe that your faith moved God. Your faith moved God. Faith does not move God. <laughs> Now, now I know, now, now know y'all looking at me. This joker done lost his mind. All my life, my grandmama them told me that my faith moved God. Faith, your faith does not move God. Why? Because God's already moved. God's always the first person to move when repositioning is necessary. He moves first. 
And because he's already moved, it is not faith that moves God, but it is faith that moves us into position to line up with his repositioning of everything. I know this is, it did me the same way. It did me, it did me the exact same way. No, faith is moving me. Faith is moving me. Faith is moving me. I am making the adjustment. I am responding. See, if, if, if the doctor says, you know, you have cancer, then I, I need to move. Healing's already set. I need to position myself to respond to what's already set. See, the extreme of faith will have you thinking that your actions are responsible for moving God who's moved. That's right. He wouldn't have said it's finished. Imagine Jesus trying to finish something that's finished after he's finished it. Just because you're asking for something that's already finished. Lord, move. Move right now, Jesus. Move, Jesus. Why y'all fasting? Because we want to move God. No, 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 no. God has already moved. Are y'all, are y'all <sighs> Faith doesn't move God. It moves us in position to receive what God has already provided by grace. Now here's the next one. Faith does not cause a positive response from God. My faith is what caused that. No, 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 no. Faith does not cause a positive response from God. Do you understand?